hello guys so i was planning on this just to be a regular candle making video and i give you guys some tips and tricks like i usually do but um this is actually a story time video on how i lost 500 dollars worth of candles and this is the candles i was making that i was planning on doing the video on but they ended up completely wrong and i'm going to be showing you how also if you were here for tips and tricks stay tuned and listen to the story because i might include some but um yeah i hope you enjoy this story on how i lost 500 dollars worth of candles okay to get started um let's just say that these candles were still functionable they just weren't what i would sell to my customers like so i would um i hold my candles to a certain quality and when i went to go test these candles they weren't the quality that i felt comfortable selling to people so i wanted to get that out the way um i do have however one of these types of candles on my shop and that's because this one line of candles that i did um actually did turn out pretty good so i did decide to sell them but all the rest were trash and i just gave them to my stepfather to light in his um room so yeah with that said now let's get into the story time so starting off i was basically starting this new candle line for my business heavenly boutique and this was basically me reusing old candle jars that my parents got or that i just got along the way burning my own candles cleaning them out and reusing the jars to make new candles my parents love bath and body works um so they're always ordering a lot of candles when i say a lot i mean like 40 jars at a time and when they're done all they do is just throw them away so we usually end up throwing away a lot of these glass jars and then i remember seeing a while ago on how to clean out these bath and body work jars it's just you take boiling hot water um after the candles burnt out and it lifts up the wax takes the wicks out then you wash them in the sink you know yada yada and you clean them out and then they're new to use you do want to sanitize them however with alcohol or like clorox wipes before you do make them into new jars but um yeah this is what i was doing so we could stop wasting all these jars that we were getting so i clean out these candle jars and i buy my new wax um and some fragrance oils as i usually do when i go to make a new line of candles and i start making my candles as you can see here i made a wax bin which i also put in the video i'll also be uploading a short on how i made that soon i think i already did upload it actually i have like a link to it in the corner but um yeah and i was just making these candles also um i told you i was going to be including some tips and tricks in here as well uh something that i found out or that i wanted to test actually was um i seen that you can dissolve these peanuts so i know sometimes you guys may order from small businesses or small businesses may order from other businesses that package with a lot of um packaging peanuts and one um thing that candle science usually does is they package with a lot of packaging peanuts and i usually just save them and i re like package them in my own stuff but i've seen this thing where you take the packaging peanut and you can actually dissolve it in water and i think this is because they're made with cornstarch so you can actually take a packaging peanut put it in water stir it around and give it like a minute or so and it will actually completely dissolve into the water so if you instead of throwing them away do this but if you do throw them away it's okay they're gonna be biodegradable anyway but um yeah i found that pretty cool so there you go anyway back to the story so I get all my supplies together and I go to make my candles and I make them how I usually make them. I do one fragrance per pound of wax and I measure out all my things as I usually do. But I do one thing new and that is I add mica. Something I highly recommend uh, you do, which is kind of like a no brainer, but you should test out your candle batch before you any fragrance if you're doing something anything new with it if you're getting a new wick getting um new jars getting new fragrance using new wax do a small batch 
first i beg you because this was devastating to me when i found out that this happened and it just was a major drawback for me personally and it would it could have all been avoided if i was to just test out this in a smaller batch instead of going for a huge batch at once so please 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 test out whatever new thing you're adding to your candle um in a small batch that was the lesson learned from this story but if you're taking away anything from this video please small batch okay so i added mica to my candles and at first i was like oh wow it has an amazing hot throw and it smells super nice and it looks super pretty like everyone's gonna love this and then like the jars are reused so you know you're recycling at the same time it's a win 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 uh, right no i ended up finished making the candles i topped them off with my heat dryer um and I put the lids on them and I let them sit for about one to two weeks for the fragrance to throw more. And so, you know, as I'm as I'm letting them sit, you know, they're smelling great. They there's no wrong signs at all that the candles messed up until I go to give some to my parents to light mm. for me. So I give them to my parents and this is when we start seeing the bad signs. The first wrong sign was that the candle did not have a good scent throw. All my fragrances I used in these candles I have used before and they're known to be really strong when you light them, even in a really large room. And these were the largest candles I have ever made. So you'd think that they would smell up the room even more than my previous ones. But no, you could barely smell them at all. And at first I was kind of skeptical, I'm like, well that doesn't make sense you know they're bigger and you know more fragrance oil you should be able to smell them but you couldn't smell the candles at all and i was like okay um hmm let me let me go see what's wrong right and a few days later apparently when you light some of the candles the wick clogs and burns itself out so what this means is when you go to light the candle after a few seconds after lighting it it basically drowns in its own wax and the flame that's lighting the candle goes out and it will keep doing this and it just won't stay lit that was the second problem the third problem was that um one of the candles got melted all the way down and the jar got so hot hot that it actually burnt through um onto the table that it was um laying on but um yeah overall it was a complete and utter mess and it was just a horrible experience all around but i did learn a really valuable lesson from it and that is to test in small batches i also wanted to let um some of these small businesses uh know because i know some people who make candles follow my account that if this does happen to you don't worry about it it's um it does it may seem a really big inconvenience at the time and it really is but in business you want to try to make every bad experience a learning experience no matter what it is um like i learned a really bad a really valuable lesson from this so this probably won't ever happen to me again because of this one incident and yeah whatever goes wrong in your business you want to take a step back and don't worry about it because worrying it's not going to make the situation different you don't want to stress over it because stressing is not going to fix it either you just kind of want to breathe you know if you have to step away step away and then come back and evaluate what went wrong figure out what you can do right next time and write down how you can make this better so it doesn't happen again but um one thing is if something like this happens to you like yeah five hundred dollars is a lot of money but it's also it was also really significant for me to learn this lesson and i want you guys to take that away with you as well in this little story time now with that said let me give you some candle tips and tricks um that was also in this video but i didn't really talk about it because most of it was a story time but let me say that some things that i recommend at the end of this if you stayed so let's get into that part so first off in this video earlier you might have seen um i made my own candle bin and you may have seen on like instagram youtube or other candle makers they have usually a bin that's 
just full of their wax so they can just go out and scoop it anytime they want and i want to show you how to make your own bin i believe i made a youtube video on this before but if you didn't see it i'm just going to quickly go into the steps that you need because it's very simple all you need is three things um a trash bag uh, a box and some duct tape and that's it uh, I used the box that I got from Candle Science because if you order a lot of supplies like me, you'll get really big boxes from Candle Science. So all I did was fold down the flaps, tape them down, and then I got a really big constructor bag and I put it in the box and folded it around the edges and taped those shut and filled it up with all my wax. And I just leave um, a measuring cup in there so when I need to go scoop and measure out my wax, it's all in this big bin. And you can even make your own cover for it, whether that's just like a cardboard cover or whatever, but really simple, really cheap, and you probably already have all the stuff at home that you need to make it. My next tip is if you are doing multi-wicked candles whether that's a three wicked or two wicked um i recommend you do get a wick setter that helps you align your candles the right way um i can usually do it okay by myself by hand but it is really difficult to do this for a lot of candles over a long period of time so if you are doing or planning on doing multi-wick candles i suggest you get a wick setting tool there is one on candle science and i believe it's 30 dollars, and it helps you set two wick and three wick but there's also a whole bunch of etsy sellers who make their own 3d printed ones and you can get them custom made for whatever jars you're using so that's also a recommendation but if you are doing that i suggest I should get those as well my final tip and trick um is also don't be afraid to try something new um yeah this whole experience was kind of traumatizing for my candle making uh, career but i did learn a lot from it and it doesn't mean i'm gonna stop using mica either i just know not to use it in candles and i might even try it and make it making some wax molds um later on in my career and testing it out in small batches before i try to make a lot of them but um yeah don't be afraid to start or try anything new from this video this video's purpose wasn't to try to scare you into not using mica at all it was just to inform you what my experience is what i did and what i learned from them so you can learn from my mistakes so you don't have to go through the same thing um with that said uh there's a lot of things also you can try besides candle making like if you want if you're like worried about getting into candle making um because you don't feel like you have enough information about it or you don't have the money to start it it's actually very inexpensive to start your own candle making business and it's not intimidating at all once you actually start to do it um so also if you are worried about starting your own candle making business i have a video on how you can start and it has a whole bunch of good links and resources for you and if you want i can even make more for you but don't be afraid to start anything whether it's even candle making bath bombs soaps phone cases eyelashes lip gloss anything just start it and you'll find out along the way whether you really like to do it or not but um yeah that was my final piece of advice and with that said i hope you enjoyed the video this was a little bit um kind of a different video so let me guys know if you want more videos like this or if you want me to go back to my old content or if you have some new ideas you want me to make a video on be sure to comment them down below but with that said i love each and every one of you and if this video helped you found it funny or you learned something from it please like this video or even subscribe it does help out this channel a lot and again thank you so much bye hello here are some cold process soap facts most store brought soaps strip your skin of its natural oils leaving your skin feeling dry and itchy after you wash it cold process soap is made with oils and sodium hydroxide lie after it goes through a curing process nothing but the oils are present in cold the soap. process soap cleans your skin but doesn't strip it of any of its natural oils so you usually don't even have to apply lotion after getting out the shower or washing your face using cold process soap can help you clear your acne reduce tension and a lot more things depending on the soap's ingredients 
I use cold process soap to wash my face and body every day, and it's also unscented. What you put on your body is just as important as what you put in your body. Be mindful of the soap you're using and its ingredients.